Born in Zimbabwe, uh, in a small town called Morewa. As I grew up, because from that time it was almost like every Sunday, meet with a missionary. As I grew up, Sunday school, and then become a young boy in the church, it was missionaries, missionaries. The first time I met a missionary, uh, and I'll never forget this, I was only four years old. It was back in the village, and the missionary was, uh, you know, Mildred Taylor. She is from North Alabama Annual Conference, where I'm serving now. Uh, but she came into the village, you know, to meet with the local people, and my mother was part of it. I'm talking about 1968, and I'm four years old by then. So I'm just following my mother to this meeting where she's going. And the women are, are singing, they're dancing, waiting for the missionary to come. And so the missionary comes in, and I saw her. I'm four years old, but that time, all I've seen are black people. I've never seen a white person before. So she comes in, first of all, I look at her, and I say, wow, I've never seen a person like this before. But I'm young, I'm the only young person there. So she comes there and she lifts me up. She holds me in her arms. As she's holding me in her arms, she's enjoying the music. She's dancing and holding me up, trying to keep up with the rhythm. I remember very well that she was not keeping up with the rhythm at all, trying to hold me, trying to dance. And I was just saying to myself, just put me down. But you know, she was trying her best. And I, the more I was looking, the more I could say to myself, this, this woman can sing and dance at the same time. But what I remember though was, that was a sign of love she gave to me. So my first contact with a missionary was that kind of love. So yes, I became aware of what they were trying to do, but my, my understanding then was they are coming to, to share the gospel, but my understanding was they are coming to change the way people live in this village. They are bringing new culture, they are bringing new educational system, they are bringing new health system, they are just trying to change everything in this village and give them a new way of living. So at that point, it was just changing everything the local people knew. That was my understanding at that point because of the way I saw them presenting themselves. And, and at that point, I didn't have any problem with it, but that was my understanding that they are coming to change this whole village, even change the food we eat, change the language we speak, change the way we dress, change the way we talk, change the way we relate to each other. Because at that point, I got the feeling that whatever the local people were doing was not acceptable in the church. For them to receive this salvation that the missionary was bringing, my understanding was that we just had to change our way of living and adopt a new way of living. That's how I saw it at that point. But, you know, I just thought that's, that's the way it was supposed to be done. And remember also, this is the time of colonialism. So it almost felt like colonialism was the same as the church because the same white people are bringing the gospel and they are the ones colonizing us asking, us, asking us to change. So that was the resistance because it was seen as a way of, you know, changing people. The gospel was good, but changing the way people live, that's where, that's where the resistance was. Uh, there was a time I came to an understanding that I loved my, my village so much, I loved my culture so much, there was a time I just wondered, I didn't see anything wrong with what the local people were doing. And 
I didn't see why they needed to change. It came to a point where I didn't see why they needed to change the way they dress, uh, to change the language they speak. I didn't see why they needed to change the way their, their custom values, things they value the most. Um, it came to a point where I thought, you know, the gospel can still be preached while keeping people's cultural values. What is evil is evil in any culture. It doesn't change. And I'm not talking about that, but I'm just talking about cultural values that didn't need to be changed. It comes to a point where I say, no, some of these changes are not very, very necessary. <laughs> <laughs>